a little bit about myself and we'll get going here. Um, I started back in the late 1980s, knowing less than nothing, I guess, about the stock market, educating myself, which is actually the pretty hard way to do it, the trial and error approach. Back in 1994, I created a company called Pristine. You guys, maybe some of you remember it way back when. Uh, when the internet started, it was actually uh, just getting going and it was in the right place at the right time and things took off. And we used to do uh, seminars in hotels and travel around the country in different parts of the world. And uh, hotlines eventually evolved into uh, what you guys know today, internet webinars, chat rooms, newsletters, and so on. Used to do uh, the different expos and live trading challenges back at the time. Actually, was at the first one. I'll show you a picture of that way back when at the first Traders Expo. Over the years, I've educated a tremendous amount of individuals, hedge funds, market makers, specialists, prop traders, retail traders, investors. They used to come to my office from around the world. Um, so did that for a long time. Eventually closed all the brick and mortar facilities it just wasn't viable anymore in the day and age of the internet and eventually sold off those old recordings and actually even the name and someone wanted it so bad they were willing to pay for it here you go started master trader and master trader technical strategies and a lot of my students are actually teaching what they learned from me over the years they've got websites prop firms uh you go to the website and uh, actually at this link right there you can read about some of the the names that you probably know today uh, this was myself a little bit more hair a few pounds lighter back at the first trader expo and you can see back there um, training trading and technology was the banners back then huge crowds back in the day when uh, the e-trades and the schwabs and the fidelities were saying stay away from those fast uh, day traders and active traders, you'll lose all of your money. And today, you know, they can't get enough of telling you that uh, trade actively and that's what you should be doing. Kind of funny. So through my time of, of self-education, I uh, went down the path probably most of you are on or, or have started on. Uh, even back in the time when uh, there was no internet and we downloaded data from a uh, phone line of over 2400 baud modem and type DOS commands, we were still inundated with indicators. We didn't have the sophisticated indicators that are available today, but we still the old, you know, Stanwell stochastics and MACDs and fibs and all, all of that stuff. And I wrote even some of my own at, way back in the day, trying to build a better mousetrap and after some time of trying to figure all of that out and not making any money, <laughs> um, you know, I thought to myself, well, do I go back to my old profession or is, or is there really a way to make money doing this through technical analysis? And what I did was I just removed all of this noise and I said, you know, this is just pretty crazy here. Just as they say, doing the same thing over and over again and, and expecting a different result. And you know, so today you know, you can you know view all of the same information, and you know I ask the question: Can you see the prices through the indicators? Do you have so many indicators on there that it's taken up more space than the prices? Are you frustrated with looking at different indicators and deciding which are the right settings? Which time frame do I apply them to? Um, if you're ready to get beyond that confusion, I think I have a better way of doing it. And I said, I've taught many individuals on how to do this. So let's, I think I went too far there. Hold on. No. All right. So uh, the question is, I think for everyone, do you want to be told what to do? What do you want to be told how to do it? Uh, in some instances, you'd probably do want to be told what to do, meaning, hey, here's a great opportunity to buy X or, or short Y uh, or buy an ETF. And by the way of being told what to do, I like to do it by saying, hey, look over here. And based on your own trading plan and strategies, if that makes sense to you, here's an opportunity that I think makes sense. 
I don't want to tell you, go ahead and do this and follow it blindly. It's kind of like being in your own business and, you know, needing to pick up the phone the next day and call somebody to say, hey, how do I do whatever it is that you want to do versus, hey, I know how to do this. And if there's a, a shorter cut to doing that, meaning can someone help me say, hey, here's an opportunity to take a look at. Well, that, that's what I do at Master Trader. So what I came to find out was that while all the indicators, you know, they're just not needed, price is king. If you can read a price chart, everything else is secondary. Now I look at it a candlestick format because it just jumps out at me as pictures. What we do as price pattern traders is look at pictures and say that I recognize that picture from the past and the result was prices went up, prices went down or they went sideways based on that picture. And that suggests what's gonna happen in, in the future. It comes down to that simple a strategy. Now, by looking at what the trend is and defining it in multiple time frames, I increase the probability of being on the right side of that picture in the time frame that I'm looking at. Because as we all know, not every picture works out the way we thought it would based on the past. But if I can align these concepts, trend, multiple time frames, support and resistance, if there's some volume analysis, which to me is secondary, my primary focus with volume is, is, it, is there a spike? which means that there was a lot of activity there. So I want to pay attention. The big one here, and they're all big, but position and money management. If you don't have the position and money management down, you're probably never going to make money because so many come to the markets thinking of money management secondary if they think about it at all. Um, one of the courses that I have available and taught for years is a money management and position management course. Guess what course is bought the least? That one. Everybody wants to know the technical analysis part. Everybody wants to know about options. Money management comes a little later after a few losses and trying to figure out how to exponentially increase profits and how to lose money. So, and whether you're trading stocks, options, futures, the technical approach that we use, it's applicable to everything. Meaning there isn't one best market. There are times when stocks are trending and they're great. Other times they're going sideways and it's just an exercise in frustration. For example, today, the markets are what intraday is what I call a commission generator. They try and go up. They don't. They try and go down. They don't. And they're flip-flopping sideways. Other markets may have been trending and doing well, whether it's futures, a commodity, Forex, um, you got to depend, decide what it is that you're focusing on. There's no best market that's the best all the time. So everything that I've done and, and taught over the years and focused on is keep it simple. How can I simplify this so I don't suffer from analysis paralysis? Because that's where I was years ago. Too many time frames too many indicators, too many moving averages, too much information that was just overloading my brain. And eventually I just realized, let's just get rid of all of it and see what happens. And that was a little bit of a moment of uncertainty to move away from what everyone, every book, it wasn't pretty much everyone back in the day because there was no internet, it was snail mail, but it was still the same, different indicators, MACDs, stochastics, and, and so on. Um, and even the candlesticks, are, well, there are 50 patterns or the 60 patterns and all the different combinations, which they all change when you change time frames, which leads to more confusion. In reality, this whole technical analysis, uh, educational business, creates so much uncertainty because of the indicators and complexity. And my focus is let's get this down to a simple approach that makes sense. And when we talk about candlesticks, our focus is, is momentum increasing? Is it slowing down? Is it reversing? In other words, is there something to do here? Was there an event that says prices are ready to move up or down in the direction of a trend? 
If it's going sideways, I want to stand the side. So there are wide range bars, there are narrow range bars, and are they green, meaning they closed above the opening price, or red, they close below the opening price. So increasing momentum to the downside, decreasing momentum, is the momentum increasing to the upside or is it contracting? Now, topping tail bars, candlestick books might call them, uh, don't call me to the names because I've forgotten them many, many years ago, whether they're shooting stars, hammers, hangmans, um, whatever they may be. If it went up and it came back down, that means sellers took control. Is If it's a big bar, that means it was a big green bar and then it turned into this topping tail bar that closed below its open. And if that happens at resistance in a downtrend, that's a powerful signal. If buyers took control where it was a big red bar, which it had to be before it turned into a bottoming tail bar, buyers took control. And if it was moving down over a period of time and it's in an uptrend, well, that's a good buy signal. If it was a sharp move down into an area of support, where it had become climactic and reversed, that's a good buy signal. So we take some pretty simple concepts and put them in the context of a trend and support and resistance. And then putting multiple time frames together, that puts the odds in my favor. So we have some foundational patterns. Don't try and get exact patterns. That was another hurdle that I needed to get over many years ago because I thought that is the pattern that makes money. I've seen it numerous times. And then there came a day, the market went up or down and I didn't see my picture. So I started changing time frames. So there's the picture. Then I didn't see the picture the next day. So I started looking at more and more time frames with more and more indicators. Pretty soon it was brain damage. Let's simplify this. So simple patterns. We have a retracement pattern, right? just a pullback. Is it an uptrend? Is it retesting an area of support? Is it climactic? So that is one of the foundational patterns. The other pattern is a retest pattern. One of my favorites, if not the favorite, because this happens over a little bit more extended period of time where that first bottoming tail on the top uh, above the green line or the topping tail below the red line there gets retested. So I've got a current reference point of support or resistance and then a reversal. And that's a high probability pattern that again, we want to put in combination of multiple time frames in the trend. Flag patterns. Right? probably all heard of flag patterns where you get a sharp momentum move higher or lower. Now, what, a flag, what does a flag pattern do? So I always want to understand what does the picture mean? And that's what I explain to students. Rather than saying here is a dark cloud cover or a morning star or whatever, what does this pattern mean? Well, if it went up sharply, obviously there was strong demand. Well, why didn't it pull back with the retracement pattern? because demand is that strong. That's what creates a flag type of pattern which suggests it's going to go higher. And that is where it begins to create support where the retracement pattern pulls back to support and then buyers step up again. So again, the flag pattern creates support because demand is so strong. And if it's a bearish flag pattern, well, supply and sellers are so strong that they create a resistance area and that leads to further downside. The other pattern is just a what I call a well-developed base, which could also be creating support, but over a longer period of time. This is what we all look for, where prices moved up strongly, and then they go sideways, and you buy the breakout of the base, looking for prices to go higher. And for the downside, it went down sharply, it forms a base, and you look to sell the breakdown. Simple. Now, is there resistance above or support below? If there isn't, that's what I call a price void. In other words, there's nothing to trade against. Similar to buying a breakout to new 52 week highs. Where are you gonna sell on your profit? Well, you have no reference point. 
or if you're selling 52 week lows, you've got no reference point. So here you don't have the competition beyond other traders and investors that say, here's that point over there to the left for me to sell or cover at. And that leads to a trending pattern. So we're going to use some moving averages. So after I removed everything from the chart, I said, you know what? These moving averages help me speed up the analysis. I use the simple ones. And of course, they become a self-fulfilling prophecy. But another thing I realized from looking at all those moving averages years ago was that they're really not support and resistance as we're all led to believe. Um, however, they can become a self-fulfilling prophecy, especially on a daily chart, because so many are looking at them, especially the 50 and the 200 on an index and most stocks, because that's what institutions are taught to look at as well. So they become reference points that you can trade against and look for turning points. Trend lines are useless. If you are into connecting dots, well, you don't have to. Once you understand a trend is just simply higher highs and higher lows or vice versa. Connecting dots and projecting them into the future actually sounds ridiculous when you come to think about it. But turn on CNBC and almost on a daily basis, you'll see somebody drawing their finger across the screen, connecting the dots and saying, here was a trend break or that support and resistance. It doesn't work. And when it doesn't, they just connect new dots and project it into the future. And all of this comes down to really common sense. And when you start looking at a lot of this stuff through the eyes of common sense, you come to realize it's ridiculous and you just need to focus on price and understand how to do that. And I said the moving averages can help visually speed up the analysis. Hang one second here. Uh, just checking questions, which I forgot to do. All right, okay. Uh, real good. Uh, reversed it back down, okay. Do you, do you ever average down in a position? Yes, JT, and I know that flies in the face of the accepted, but I do it when I plan to do it, and I'm uncertain about a turning point. So I use a larger stop, smaller position, and, and then decide when and if I should average down to the full price that I wanted to. I cover all of that in my money management course. Do you mean to pest to do a large side? I just want to see. Maybe that wasn't. I don't know. Don't mean to be a pest, but do you? I don't know. I don't understand. 20 EMA. If you want to use EMA, you can just stay consistent. I haven't found them to give any advantage whatsoever. Uh, maybe if you're trading Forex where more people are looking at that, maybe that makes sense. Um, I just use the simple version, looked at weighted, exponential, triangular, and so on. Uh, just, I like to keep it simple, stupid. All right, 20 MA, relatively short moving average. It follows the trend pretty well. Right? Uh, could you explain if there's a pre and post market candlestick should be included? I do look at them, pre-market charts uh, for gap trades in, in the morning to see if there's support and resistance. They do come into play. Okay. All right. So multiple time frame alignment. How can we speed this up? Let me just go back and make sure I didn't click that too fast. Okay. We're doing good here. All right. So simple question. Would you agree that trending in the same direction? And because of limited time, I'll just answer that. It's not a trick question, but they are. So while the 20 MA is just a visual aid that speeds up speeds up the analysis. It's really just following if it's making higher highs or higher lows or creating support with this kind of bullish price action there and so on. So it's trending up. The 60 MA here is trending up. The 5 MA is trending up. And if they're all trending up, it makes sense that the odds are in my favor because I have multiple time frames moving in the same direction. 
Now, I want to simplify this, but we'll get to that in a second. So here's an example. I say, would you agree that they're all trending in the same direction? And clearly they're not. The 60 is up, the 15 is down, the five minutes beginning to stabilize, so they're not. So at that point, I know the odds of picking the direction just aren't on my favor. It's time to wait to see if they'll come back together. Since the 60 is trending up, I would say it's likely to resume in the lower time frames, but I have to wait for that to happen versus trying to pick a certain point where I think it might happen and just arbitrarily, you know, place an order to buy or sell. Right? So the odds are not on my side in the moment. Maybe I'll get lucky, but maybe it just chop around, similar to what prices did today. Now, let's try and continue to simplify this by looking at a limited amount of information, but to gather the same amount of information that I want. And that's how moving averages can be used. And to do that, we just have to do a simple calculation of determining what that moving average is by looking at one time frame. So if I go back, and I like to use the five minute time frame as my primary time frame for intraday trading. Now, while I can look at these, if I can look at a chart that tells me what's going on on the 60, the 15, and the five, well, that's going to be a benefit to me. Will you wait for all three time frames to be in sync? That's exactly what I want to do. I want to wait for them to be in sync where they're moving in the same direction. Or at least the 60 has already begun to move in the same direction. And right? so let's take a look at that. So this is really simple how to do it. Right? So the 10 MA is the same as a 50 MA on a daily time frame. The weekly 10 MA is the same as the 50 daily. Right? So five daily bars equal one weekly bar. You just multiply five times 10 and you get a 50. It's pretty simple. 60 MA, right? that 20 MA is the same as a 240 on a five minute. 12 bars times 20 is 240. I'm gonna use the 200 because that's what more people look at anyway, even on a five minute chart, and it's close enough. It doesn't have to be exact. What you find when you've been doing this for a while is that things don't have to be so exact as you might think, like I don't even use Fibonacci, but when you start thinking about things that you're gonna define within a decimal point, you're looking for the holy grail, and it's just not out there. All right, 15 minutes, same as a 60 on a five, three times 20 equals 60, pretty simple. Five minute, we'll put them all, and we'll look for them to be in alignment. So from that five minute, I'm gonna know the trends by using those moving averages from the others, where those 20 MAs are. Like I said, the 20 MA will follow the trend relatively closely. If you wanna use a 15 MA or a, and recalculate it that way, I'm not telling you to, I'm just saying there's no holy grail here. You can do it with these calculations and, and use whatever you want. Do you think there's anything to Fibonacci? Yeah, I think people sell a lot of courses with them. I think they can become a self-fulfilling prophecy in certain markets like Forex, but as far as locating support and resistance, it's a lot of hocus pocus. Right. So start with the daily chart, five minute chart, put on the three moving averages, 20, 60, 200, see if they're in alignment. If they're all in alignment, you know, one above the other like this, it's going up by breakouts, by pullbacks, use those foundational patterns uh, to trade in the direction of those time frames. So there's the 15 minute, and you can see it's roughly in the same area. I'm not looking for things to be completely exact. I'm looking for alignment of these trends with my foundational patterns, with what I call a price void, which means it's got room to continue to move up. So if we look at that daily, it's dropped into an area of support. It's begun to stabilize. You can see where the stars are. It's likely to retrace back up in a counter trend move. So if my time frames have come into alignment, 
with my bias based on the daily, well, I've got an intraday trade here on my five minute chart. And this just visually tells me that all these time frames are in alignment and it should go up based on my bias from the daily. Now, when you put this together, you realize it's just common sense. We're just simplifying it to make it easy to do with a limited amount of information. So I'm waiting for a picture of multiple time frame alignment by looking at those moving averages. And here's they're all moving down, so the odds are in my favor. Now, as those moving averages start to come together, not necessarily the 200, but the five minute trend and the 15 minute trend, which is the 20 MA and the 60 MA, as they're coming together, that means the volatility is contracting. And when volatility contracts, it's likely to expand and it's likely to do that in the direction of the prevailing trend. And I said, is there a price void? In this case, is there a void of support below? If there is, it's likely to keep going down. And I'm probably going to have a trend trade on my hands on the five minute time frame, where the five minute will continue to trend lower in the direction of what's come together in multiple time frames. So there's no holy grail. It's about what I'm explaining to you, multiple time frame alignments, foundational patterns, and just trying to simplify this where the odds are in my favor and placing a trade. Now, this mess is not what we're looking for. Right, you see the moving averages just intersecting the prices and it's whipping back and forth. It's similar to what was happening today. If you look at a five minute chart today, with those moving averages, things were flipping back and forth through the moving averages. It tried to break out, it tried to break down, it didn't happen. J TJ, a void is, I use the word void to just one word that says, there's nothing to trade against, meaning a reference point of support and resistance. For example, prices are at a 52 week higher low. They have gone down climactically and gone sideways. Let's say it's a daily chart and prices dropped uh, over the course of you know several hours or several days, five, six, seven, ten days, and then went sideways for four days. There's going to be a void above. <clears throat> so it's just a simple way of saying, hey, there's nothing to trade against where I can uh, place in order to buy or sell. If you want to sell something, you're probably going to look to the left and say, well, here's a prior high. I'll place an order to sell when it gets there. So in this example, I've got the daily and weekly timeframes that are coming together where that arrow is pointing to the moving averages intersecting each other and the 20 MA is rolling over <clears throat> and the 50 MA is flattened out there. So here you've got an example of a void. I think mean, prices went up. They've gone sideways over a period of time. You might recognize it as a head and shoulders top. Um, it could have just went sideways over, you know, didn't have to make the head and the right shoulder and all of that. It just went sideways over time after going up. And if, now as it starts to break down, what are you going to trade off of? This is what breakouts and breakdowns are the essence of. But why do you trade a breakout or a breakdown? Well, because you think it's going to go up or down, but if there's another reference point of support or resistance directly to the left, it's not going to go very far before somebody places an order at that reference point. So here's the same daily chart where it rolled over and now I've got my bias on, on the five minute chart. And this happens a lot at the latter part of the day. So we've got morning trades, we've got afternoon trades, and this is my go to setup in the afternoon where the picture looks like this, multiple time frame alignment, those moving averages and the 20 and the 60 come together where there's a void and it's likely to keep going down, right? Five minute trend going up, just the opposite. Look for the foundational pattern, in this case, the W. Another example of it going up. I'm just gonna speed up here. Gap trades, that's what we do in the morning. And in a gap course, they've got a seven point system. We're looking for 
shocks. Wide range bar breaking out. It's gapping below. <laughs> Guy's shocked. Of course, he's going to sell. So I'm looking for these shock patterns when they occur. All right, so you look for your gap list in the morning, and you're looking for what's gapping above a red bar, what's gapping above a wide range bar or below, support, resistance. In this case, you've got different gaps. It's gapping above a high. I like that. It should keep going up. Here, it's gapping slightly above this resistance area. Right? This one's kind of gapping right into this resistance. It went up, but mm, I wouldn't be so sure of that continuing. And that one here, and it's just gapping within a range. So no interest whatsoever. So now, same thing. I'm looking for my daily chart. In the 15-minute chart, I want to see if it's gone sideways up or down at the end of the day. If it's gone sideways, well, it's the same idea of selling a breakdown. Now I go to the five-minute chart. I got a, a red bar on the five minute chart, means it closed below its open and shorted below the five minute low. When do you look for afternoon trades? After lunch. <laughs> I know it sounds matter of fact, but it is. Those trades typically set up around two o'clock, sometimes three o'clock. So a breakout failure, that's a shock, right? It breaks down under the low there. Right? It's breaking down on the daily chart. It's breaking down on the intraday chart. But it happens so fast. Probably all of you have had that scenario where you've got this gap trade. It happens so fast you can't do it. Well, you go to your foundational retracement pattern. Right? Pretty simple. It retraces back up toward resistance. You've got a topping tail bar is there. You short it below the low. Your bias is based on the daily. You look for it to continue to go down. So I've created a whole bunch of scans to look for these gaps. Right? There are a lot of gap scanners out there. Um, this is out of TC2000. And uh, it, what's gapping up percentage-wise? Is it gapping above wide range bars? Or I mean, a big red one or below a big green one? I didn't mean to do that. Um, and what's the percentage gap? And then you know I can keep track of them during the day as well. Because uh, the gaps are usually good places to go in the afternoon for trade setups. You know, they're great in the morning, uh, but I go to them in the afternoon as well. And even sometimes at the end of the day, you know, things that are gapping significantly above a, uh, a red bar or below a green bar, they're likely to keep going the next day. Um, and then I just link these to the charts, look at them in multiple time frames, looking for my setups. And again, it becomes pretty easy. Uh, this is being recorded. Uh, Festival of Traders or Tiger will be sending that out. So you can watch it again. And you're welcome to email myself, Greg at Master Trader, if you have questions. By the way, in this gap course, which I'm going to offer to you in a moment, I give my students these scans if they use TC2000. I have no affiliation with them. I've used this platform for many years, probably 15 years or more, created my own scans through it, and I give it away um, with the course. You join my trading room, I give the scans away. You take a swing course, I give it away. Um, so there's no extra cost for doing this, and um, you know, I offer them to my students to help them out. Gaps and big bars pretty similar, yes, because big bars are a momentum move in a smaller time frame. Uh, so a big wide range bar it, it creates that void, but the gap in in the morning that creates the void. You you know we're tr looking primarily to trade in the direction of the void. And this example that I have here, right, it's a gap above this area which was resistance. So that's a very attractive type of a pattern where it's not far away from any reference point. And then you use what I call bar by bar analysis. Right? What is that bar telling you? Right? It went down and it came back up. There were bids down here. So there's strong demand. And that means it's likely to keep going up based on what I'm telling you. There's multiple time frame analysis. And I'm also looking at what the market's doing. So I want to trade primarily in the direction that the market is going because that Again, puts the odds in my favor. And that's what this is all about, putting the odds 
in your favor with simple analysis? Would you provide scan criteria for other platforms? Well, I don't know the code for those platforms, Bill, but I'm happy to provide it. You know, you take the gap course, I will copy the criteria from my own platform and email it to you. Right? So I don't try to hide things. I'm not, they're not proprietary. Um, you know, I'm offering the course, what I've taught for to individuals for a lot of years. Some of my students sell these courses for thousands and thousands of dollars that they took from my prior company. Um, I don't mean take, I mean, they took the course, they were students. Um, so they assimilated this information and they wrote their own, you know, their course and offered it with their own name on it. It's really a testament to what I've been doing for tw over 25 years. So, and if you go to uh, mastertrader.com forward slash Greg Capra, I think you'd be a bit surprised to see the names of who my students are out there in, in the industry. And um, not to take anything away from them, they've learned a tremendous amount of information and, uh, you know, they, they teach it well as well. No IP then, I'm not sure what that means, Bill, IP. So a few comments from past students, which you could read. Um, intellectual pro nothing's no intellectual property. I mean, once you buy the course, do it with what you want, right? Um, as far as the gap scans go, there's no intellectual property. As I said, uh, I'm happy to provide it to you, and uh, you know, email me. I mean, you can figure this out on your own, or you know. The fast way is take a course, I provide the scans, you start looking at it, you assimilate it, and you start trading it on your own. Can you draw a chart, avoid a chart, please? Um, sure, I got a few minutes left. Goes down fast, goes sideways, there's a void. In other words, you don't have this. This is a lot of choppy, erratic kind of price action. So when it goes up, it tends to come down and go up. And so what we're looking for, or I'm looking for, is something that moves rapidly and then goes sideways over time. Right? So it's pretty simple. So you're moving away from what little reference points there are. So this example, so just say a particular stock goes down over even months, months and months, and it grinds all the way down. Do you think it's going to start trending back up immediately? Probably not. But if it went sideways for a few months and got away from all the sellers where those that got caught on the way down trying to pick the bottom, right, start selling, and now, let's just clear this up for a second. Um, erase it all, right? If, if you understand the psychology behind the patterns, right, through all of this mess, and during this basing period, maybe you get a big red bar breaking down and prices come right back up again and start going sideways. That flushes out the supply and the sellers. And that kind of price action, that basing is what increases the probability of something starting to trend up again. All of this is common sense once you see it, but you're so inundated with what I would call the pollution of education that is out there through the use of indicators and trend lines and fib lines and Elliott waves and all of this, that if you keep it simple, stupid, and you can understand a way to do that, you just remove all that noise from your chart and the light bulb starts to go on. And that's what it did for me when I, when I did it. If you can make money with a bunch of indicators, well, you don't need me. But if you are frustrated and trying to figure it out and you've gone that route already, well then this is something you should consider. Right? 
So the gap course, you can go to the site and I, you know, you can look at swing trading courses and option courses. What I'm offering today in this webinar is my gap course where I define what I've explained to you in great detail, every bit of it, and the gap trades, the end of day trades, and putting that all together, um, it sells every day. And I said, some of my students sell this, what they've learned for 1,500, thousands of dollars, more power to them if they can get it, I suppose, through whatever marketing, but that's not what I do. If you're interested in it, you can come and just type in mastertrader.com gap trader. You'll see the page. If you put that code in the checkout, the price will change to $4.95. And you have the course for lifetime. And with all of my courses, we offer live coaching for as long as you want to come. Um, so in those sessions, I, I review concepts, uh, Q&A, we review the broader markets. They're recorded if you can't make it so that you can study them. And through repetition of learning this information, that's what becomes second nature by repeating it over and over again and through practice. Practice comes through some paper trading, which eventually you trade smaller share size. You don't paper trade for long because you got to get that skin in the game where, you know, your emotions come into play and, um, you know, you get used to that as well. So you know, it's a lot of uh, what it takes to do this efficiently. But if you keep the trade size small at the beginning, you don't, you know, you just don't have that hurdle to go over because you are focused on your method, not the money. The money will come because all you have to do is start increasing the share size. But too many people increase the share size at the beginning and their emotions cloud being able to do this correctly.